This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Ask Larry Anything. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video tutorial, I'll illustrate the two key video scopes in Apple Final Cut Pro, how to read them and how to use them to fix color problems like color casts and dark exposure levels. Herb asks, what's the best way to use video scope waveforms in Final Cut to assist in color correction and how do you call them up? <laughs> uh, the last time I did a color correction demo, it took two days. I'm going to try to squeeze some of the key findings into 10 minutes. But before we start, I want to share two key rules the scopes can help with. First, if something is supposed to be gray or white within the frame, like a t-shirt, it will always be a single dot in the middle of the vector scope. So if I isolate on that white t-shirt, and rather than being a single dot, it's sort of like a smudge off to one side that shows me the color cast with that frame, and more importantly, shows me how I can fix it. Skin tone, regardless of race or ethnicity, are always on the skin tone line. Yes, there's exceptions, but the general rule still holds. If you think about it, what gives each of us color is not our skin, but the red blood under our skin. Our skin is essentially gray. You know this when you get cleaned up in the morning. A piece of dead skin falls off. The first thing you do is look at it and, and see, well, is this a vital part of my body and should I bother to get out of bed this morning? And after you reassure yourself that it's okay, you get cleaned up and move on. But skin is gray, sometimes a very pale gray, sometimes a very dark gray. What gives us the color of our skin is the red blood underneath it. And all of us have the same color red blood, which means that for almost all of us, except very, very pale people, the, the color of our skin is going to be on that skin tone line. Our grayscale value will vary, but our color is the same. Let me illustrate. Here, for instance, is a grayscale. This grayscale starts with pure white on the left and pure black on the right, and every shade of black, white, and gray is in a smooth ramp from left to right. Well, it's nice to be able to see that, but I can't really analyze the image because I don't have my scope showing. So let's turn scopes on by going up to the View menu, go to Show in Viewer, and turn on Scopes, a menu that I never use and instead use the keyboard shortcut, which is Command-7. There are four scopes inside Final Cut. There's the waveform monitor, that's this one right here. The vector scope, that's this one right here. The RGB parade and the histogram. When you're getting started, the two most important scopes are waveform and vector scope. Yes, the others are useful, but they're nowhere near as useful as these two. The waveform monitor tells us everything we need to know about the grayscale value of an image, while the vector scope tells us everything we need to know about the color of an image. The waveform monitor also has one other very useful function, and that is that it allows me to say things like the left side of the picture is bright compared to the middle, and the middle is bright compared to the right side. I can make left and right statements. I can't make left or right statements about the vector scope, but I can make left and right statements about the waveform monitor. In addition to being able to make left and right statements, it allows me to analyze the contents of the shot. Black is at zero. Shadows are zero to 33%, the bottom third. Midtones, that is to say, mid-range values, are from 33 to 66%. And the highlights are the top third, 66 to 100 percent, with white being 100 percent. In a non-HDR environment, you don't want any blacks below zero, and you don't want any whites over 100 percent. You have to be within that range of zero to 100. Shadows provide richness. Highlights provide energy. And midtones affect the emotional response to the image and the time of day. But notice here, although I have every shade of black, white, and gray, the vector scope shows all of that as a single dot in the very center of the vector scope. Vector scope doesn't tell me anything about grayscale. It only pays attention to color.
Now, when I have color, look at this. It says, I have some which is very close to gray, and the farther out this gets, the more saturated it becomes. And it says it's heading toward the color blue, or red, or green, or others. The color, the hue, is determined by the angle. Saturation is the distance out from the center. And the brightness is measured by the waveform monitor. I can say the left side is dark, the right side is dark, and the middle is brighter, but by looking at both scopes very carefully, there's nothing I can say about the shape itself. I can't say if this is a circle or a square, a triangle, a pipe, or the letter O. It could be any of those. I can't make content decisions by looking at the scopes, but I can make technical decisions. For instance, here, we would consider her to be Caucasian or white, but she isn't white. Her sweater vest is white, and she isn't black. Her top is black. She's kind of a mid-tone gray. And when it comes to mid-tone gray, there's her skin right here and her arms, and look at this line going right up here. That's called the skin tone line. And her skin is right on that line. A little saturated, not heavily saturated, but saturated about 30% out toward fully saturated, which is here. There's also the green grass, not a rich green, but that's that spike of green right here. And the blue is coming from the sky back here. That's this area here. Blue sky is more towards cyan than blue, and it's located right around in that area. We can see that there's some black, that's from her top, some white, that's from her sweater, and her face is roughly 60 to 65 percent, right around in there. The waveform monitor helps us to analyze the image to say, where is the grayscale value of her skin? Caucasian people are 50 to 60 percent, Hispanic, 45 to Mm, 55, 60%. Black folks are 25 to 40%. Everybody varies, but basically what's changing is not the color, that's on the skin tone line, but the grayscale value. Here, for instance, beautiful black woman wearing a white top. There's the white top. There's the grayscale value of her face between roughly 25 and 40%. And look at that. Her skin is right on the skin tone line. Asian folks are a couple degrees below. Virtually everybody else is on the line to a couple degrees above. Plus or minus two degrees of that line is where most people fall given normal studio lighting when we're not trying to play games with making it look like they're in the middle of a disco. Well, the reason that skin tone line is helpful and the waveform monitor is when we start to have problems. Like here, that's Lisa. She's kind of, kind of washed out. I mean, there's no saturation. This is getting to be pretty small. There's no light on her face. She's way down here in the mud. The only highlight is that spot right there on her forehead. Blacks are a little elevated. She's got a black shirt on, but she's not at zero. She's at 3%. So how do we fix that? Well, let's go to the inspector. And let's click the color tab. And this first one, I'm going to work with, um, well, let's work with the color board. And the first thing that I do is I always adjust grayscale values. So I look here and I see the black levels are a little high. Let's pull those down. And we'll have them sit right at the zero line, watching the waveform monitor. White levels are a little low. She's Caucasian. She should be around 60, 65 percent. She isn't. So we'll take the white levels and just pull that up. Now, it doesn't go to 100% because there's nothing white in the frame. It's a highlight. It's not white. She should be right around 60, 65%. And that's where that is. Now, we don't see anything on the skin tone line. But then again, what skin colored? Is this background skin colored? Not really. Her shirt is not skin colored. Her skin is skin colored. But what part of her skin do we focus on? 
Now, with guys, it's pretty easy because most men don't wear makeup, but with women, it's a little bit harder. I tend to work either with a well-lit part of the forehead, but there's a glow here that I'm going to avoid, or their neck because cheeks and lips and eyes have all got makeup on, and a makeup is going to change the color correction. So here's a really cool secret. Let's turn on cropping, and let's just crop down. Let's just crop down and just see part of her neck right about there okay now look at where that is there's no saturation let's go to 50 percent so i can see that see there there's your neck okay the saturation's too low and it's way over it should be on the line but it isn't so let's go to color and let's just grab this and drag it until we park it on the line. I'm being a little dramatic. Right about there. Park that on the line. And let's look at exposure. And we'll just pull the exposure up just a bit. And now let's reset. Uh, a little bit too much. We'll just pull this back here. Well, how do I pull it back? Oh no, I'm lost. How can I possibly fix this? Let's go back to her skin. The skin is the reference point. Yeah, that's clearly way out of whack. Let's just pull this back and not quite so saturated, Larry. Gently, please. And now let's reset it. Much better. And we can go and tweak our highlights and pull that down. And notice that there is a difference between, I pull our black levels down. There is a difference between the color of her skin and the color of the background. Is that not cool? And I'm pulling her skin up to about 65%, measuring on the waveform. And there is a difference between this sickly yellow in the back on those sound blankets and the black of her top sits right at zero and the highlights. So this is before and this is after. And I'm using the scopes to get me in the ballpark. Here's another example. Again, she's green. Let's turn on cropping. Turn on cropping. Select the clip. Pull this down. In this case, I'm not going to look with her face. I'm going to look for something that's well lit, which is her leg. Right about there. And look at how green that is. This time I'm going to work with color wheels, which is my preference. I prefer color wheels, actually. First thing I'm going to do, let's reset this. Black level, a little high, so I'll pull the black levels down. Control the grayscale on the right-hand side, saturation on the left. The value of this is okay. I'll just pull the mids up to give it some energy. And that's just to taste. I'm making sure that my blacks don't go below zero. Then we'll go back to her leg again. Most people don't put makeup on their legs, so it's a good thing that you can use as long as it's well lit. Okay, and there we'll go to global. And we'll change the global until we get it back on the skin tone line, right about there, and reset. And now we've got a little bit of, got to pull that down, make it a little bit richer. There we go. Get rid of that fogginess that was there. This is before, and this is after. Well, what happens if I don't have any skin? Well, that's an ex this, another green plane. Every, every green plane, wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the clip, and we'll go back to the color board. Let's pull our black levels down a bit. Right about there. And we'll select the crop. And let's find something that's supposed to be white, but isn't. Right about there. Oh my goodness, look at that. So now we'll go to color. We'll watch the vector scope. Put it on the skin tone line. There we go. Oh, no, no, not skin tone, Larry. You want it to be a single dot in the center because it's supposed to be gray. Duh. 
would have been one very strange looking plane if I did that. So we'll put it in center. This is where, you know, you become truly inept as you're trying to get the stupid white dot in the stupid center of the vector scope and it just humiliates you with people watching close enough. And now we'll reset. Look at that. Before, after. And the scopes just made it really easy to line that up. Here's another example. Let's make this look good. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll take our black level down just a bit to give us some richness, take the white level up to put some energy in the clouds, take the mids up a bit, pull the whites down because you don't want whites to go over 100%. There we go. But it's still blue. How do we get the blue gone? Well, this time we're going to pay attention to that which is supposed to be gray. The road is gray. Many times I'll put a gray coffee mug on the set just so I've got something that's supposed to be gray. In the background, it doesn't have to be big. And now we'll pull that. There we go. Take that out. Done. Before, after. Before, after. What scopes allow us to do is to measure what's happening inside the picture, make grayscale adjustments, and make color adjustments, and allow us to be much more precise rather than just simply wondering about whether this looks good. We can say this is good because the scopes give us the verification that what our eyes are seeing is correct. Let me just state these two rules. If something is supposed to be gray or white, it must be a single dot in the center of the vector scope, as we saw with the road and with the plane. And skin tones, regardless of eth ethnicity, are always located somewhere along the skin tone line. The thing that changes is the amount of saturation, the distance out from the center of the vector scope. What does not change is the color, the angle. Plus or minus two degrees of the skin tone line is where most people are going to fit. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Ask Larry Anything. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 322. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.